Oh my gosh, we spent four days in the land of chocolate and watches, saw gorgeous scenery, glorious waterfalls, shimmering turquoise blue lakes, and tunnel after tunnel after tunnel. A total engineering feat, if you ask me. Oh my gosh, you guys, seriously, this place is unreal. And that is Switzerland, one of the most beautiful countries I have ever seen. And I should add, this was my first time ever in Switzerland. A total newbie, a Switzerland virgin, if you will. So why were we here in the first place? I'll tell you why in a second. It's really hot out here, I'm sweating. Let's go inside. It is so hot. So, Switzerland, because I wanted to check off a bucket list item, something I've been yearning to see my entire life, and that is the Matterhorn. We arrived via a road trip through France, and if you missed the first video, I'll leave a link up here so you can see it. It's all about France and our experiences from the French Riviera driving up through the French Alps, now leading us here to Zermatt, Switzerland. You can watch that one if you want. You don't have to, but whatever, you do you. So, Switzerland, here we go. Here are some clips from the previous video leading up to finally seeing the Matterhorn. We are super close to Zermatt and John just booked us a room at Hotel Belrive for two nights. And supposedly we have a view of the Matterhorn from our balcony. Who knows what kind of view? It could be a peekaboo view. So we just found out cars are not allowed in Zermatt. So we have to park our car in a parking garage take all our stuff, get on a train, and take the train into Zermatt. Ah, we get off the train and we see this is a town that has no cars. So now we have to figure out how to get to our hotel, which is a 10 minute walk. And we see they have electro taxis, which are like souped up golf carts. Okay, we are now in our room. I am so excited. Here we go. This was our view. I was so happy. I cried. I felt like the luckiest person on the planet, watching this mountain come to life. The clouds, the shadows, the sunset. We spent the afternoon on the balcony, which allowed me to capture this time lapse. It was magic. Okay, that bell right there is telling us it's time to check out the village of Sermat and get some dinner. The guy's carrying skis. <laughs> Chocolate, snow sports, and watches. Oh my gosh, Zermatt is my kind of town. I mean, look at this trail map right here. In the winter time, these are all the ski trails. You can ski in Switzerland and Italy at the same time. And in the summertime, you flip this map over and there are all these hiking trails. And right here, I don't know if you can see this, this is the Matterhorn Paradise Glacier and you can ski in the summertime. That is crazy. But even if you aren't a snow sports fan, there is something for everyone in Zermatt. It was absolutely lovely strolling the village of Zermatt. The shops, the bars, the restaurants. I think we check every single restaurant menu. It's what we do. We can never make a decision on where to eat, so we ended up at the old Zermatt restaurant and bar because it was right by our hotel. But, fantastic meal. All right, I'm pretty buzzed right now, but that's okay because we just had dinner at this wonderful restaurant called Old Zermatt, which is spectacular. The Wiener Schnitzel, oh, it's so good, and all the vegetables, it's a good, I highly recommend this place. Good morning, Matterhorn. You are looking extra craggy. Huh. Those clouds. That's quick. And no, this is not a time lapse. You know what? We're checking out. Goodbye, 403. You were wonderful. There's so much more to see in Switzerland and clouds. I can see clouds anywhere. So, to continue with the theme of the previous video, it's time to add some places to the bucket list, and that is Zermatt and the Matterhorn. 
we decided on Interlochen as our next stop. But we had a choice to make, either a three and a half hour car drive or take our car onto a train that goes through a tunnel, shaving two hours off of our drive. Hello, take the tunnel. We were first in line, maneuvered into position, and we were off and OMG, we were in for a one-of-a-kind experience. Wow, this is so cool. Here we go in the tunnel. Oh my god, it's getting dark in here. Yeah, it's dark. That smell. Oh my god, it's awful. The air is awful. Close the window, Jason. I'm, I can't see anything. I'm trying. I'm trying. I can't. Okay, that may have been a little over dramatic, but we had to entertain ourselves for 20 minutes sitting in the dark. What would you do? We had to joke around, have fun. That's what you do in a tunnel for 20 minutes. Oh, good. <laughs> Our navigation just told us what to do. I think we're getting I see, to the end I of this. see, they lied, they lied. Well, we just came out of the tunnel. And just like that, we were on the other side. Pitch black train car ferry thing from Goppenstein to Kandersteg on the bucket list. Now we're on a completely different side of the mountains and it's still beautiful. Switzerland, it's just unbelievable. How in the world do those people get home? How do they even get to their house? It's so crazy. Welcome to Interlochen. Interlochen was at full capacity and we still didn't have a room for the night. So we continued on to the next village and oh boy, did we find a winner. Bernigan, a small village around six square miles occupying some shoreline on Lake Brienz. Did we love it? Absolutely. We luckily got the last room available at the Zee Hotel Bernigan. Shag carpet and all. Hello, 1970s. And mini Toblerone chocolates on the pillows. And check out this view. Incredible. Looking right over Lake Brienz. The water was so crystal clear, blue, windsurfers all over the place. Did you know landlocked Switzerland has over 620 miles of shoreline? What? Yeah, it's because it has around 1,500 lakes. Think about all that lake shoreline and it is all gorgeous. We still had a few hours of daylight left and everyone kept saying, go check out Lauterbrunnen. So it's like, okay, fine, we will and... Look at that waterfall, what? Our immediate reaction was, holy cow, this place is unbelievable. Lauterbrunnen, meaning many fountains, sits in a valley with towering mountains on both sides. You are constantly looking up. There are a total of 72 waterfalls that seemingly fall right into the town. All right, this is pretty cool because I'm just walking in the street and there's this waterfall right there. Pictures and video can't capture what we were seeing. You need to see this place in person. Just like Zermatt, an expansive network of trains and cable cars whisk you up to higher elevation villages and ski resorts. This place is amazing. We needed more time. Sadly, we were only here for the afternoon. Lauterbrunnen on the bucket list. Good morning, Bernigan. It is so lovely here. Tranquil would describe it best. Centrally located and a great base point to explore the Bernese Oberland area. We are coming back. Bernigan on the bucket list. Tunnels and turns and we just kept turning and turning and turning. It was pretty well. We are now headed for the city of Lucerne which is on Lake Lucerne, Switzerland's fourth largest lake. All right, we made it to Lake Lucerne. The city of Lucerne. Oh, sorry, city of Lucerne. 
Okay, yeah, I don't know if you can see this, but can you see all these bugs? Kind of funky. And split them up. They maintain the character of the building. We walked the famous Chapel Bridge, the oldest wooden covered bridge in Europe, built in the 14th century. Triangular paintings along the bridge recount the history of the city. Unfortunately, several are now gone due to a fire in 1993 that destroyed almost the entire bridge. Also typical of many old European cities, murals painted on the faces of several buildings depicting the original businesses once conducted. We check out the interior of the Jesuit Kirche. Beautiful. We're walking across this beautiful bridge right here. And over here. Beautiful building. In this beautiful building. Look up at the top of the building. Look at this sun design on the top. And then down below is Starbucks. And yes, I got Starbucks. I know, whatever. Sometimes you need something familiar. Okay? Lucerne on the bucket list. <laughs> to steer away from the tourists in Lucerne, we decided to find a hotel room on another part of the lake. We tried to find a room in a town called Vegas, but the entire town was solid booked. We ended up in a town called Vitznau. And we found a room at the Hotel Terraza Am See, right on the lake. This place looked perfect. Everything was calm and quiet, and the hotel, it was older, but the view was astounding. We sat on our hotel balcony the remainder of the afternoon, waiting for the sunset. It was the first time we felt like we could relax on this trip. We love the town of Vitznau. It's small, but fun. Also, there's access to the Vitznau Rigibon outside the hotel doorstep that takes you up to Mount Rigi. Some say it's the best view of Lake Lucerne. Vitznau on the bucket list. <laughs> I have a bonus for you guys. So we are headed to Strasbourg, France, but we have three days to kill. So where are we gonna go? We are going to the Black Forest in Germany. We are headed for a village called Zeich, which is by a lake called Tidize. Sounds cute, right? All of this is in the Black Forest, which really gets its name from the forest canopy that can be really dense. It's not even dark or creepy at all or mysterious, but who knows? So we get a room at Hotel Zeigerhe and it is bright as can be. The view from our room was insanely beautiful. And so this is kind of a vacation from this vacation because we have been just going nonstop. We're basically gonna decompress here. And so we're giving ourselves three days to just do absolutely nothing in this beautiful countryside. I stopped to photograph some cows, which I'm sure the locals thought was strange. Being from Southern California, cows are not an everyday occurrence. Looking into the cow's eyes, I almost turned vegan. They were so cute. This behind me is Titize. I think that's how you say it. Titize. Titize was a delightful village with all sorts of shops and restaurants in a lake in which you could rent boats and paddle out and just hang out on the lake for the day. The breakfasts at Zygahe were pretty awesome. I looked forward to it every single morning. And the hotel restaurant for dinner was fantastic as well. Oh my God.
you go to bed. Tidize Zeik at Hotel Zeigerhe in the Black Forest, all on the bucket list. In the next video, we are headed back to France to explore Strasbourg, the wine roads, and Lyon, France to conclude our 24-day road trip through France, Switzerland, and Germany. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you're not yet subscribed, subscribe. And to all my current subscribers, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smile. And yeah, my arms are moving like crazy. Oh, if you missed the previous France video, it's up here in the links. Don't forget to watch it because it's fun. Because it's a series of videos, you might want to watch them. You might buy, you gotta buy. I don't know. Whatever. Just watch them. Peace.